residential tenants is considered low risk. You know, the, the only risk in residential in the MER world is that we don't build too many of these things and people and we go up gangbusters. There's quite a few popping up around the city, but it doesn't look like it's affecting the, the vacancy rate that much. Well not everyone. Yeah, well, the, the thing in Moncton that's a little peculiar is we're like a duplex nation, or a semi-attached nation, and most of the rest of the country, it's... Well, that'll crash your it's, it's condos. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not at all. But here in, here in St. John's, Newfoundland, where you find those two cities, and it just looks like a bunch of, it's a bunch of semi-detached. Go anywhere else in the country. So you just take that standard that's typical. Yeah. Um, Typical, yeah. Um, but sometimes there is, and sometimes there isn't, and sometimes there are a lot more, like, again, other places. <coughs> All do it differently. Um, we almost have to do is if you're, if you're out comparing. It's very tough to go out and go, if you're doing a commercial property, or you're going out, it's hard to shop six banks, because they all ask you for that much paperwork, and, you know, Buying the building is the easy part, right? So it's it's tough to go to five places and everybody doing credit checks on you and ask, and you know, asking for left arm, right arm. Um, but you have to look at the total cost of ownership because some will like buried in the rate, right? Mm, yeah. Some places will will tell you, oh, we can do that no problem, and we'll do it with all of this for security, okay? Like security in Residential real estate is usually pretty straightforward. It's always the same stuff. When there's CMHC involved, it's just these are the things you have to have. But when it's commercial, it can be subjective. Could have a personal guarantee, could have a limited guarantee, could have no guarantee, could have full guarantee. And a lot of places might say, you know, they'll promise the whole world, but at the 11th hour, the rest of the story comes out. But if you look at your total cost of ownership, most, a lot of the Maybe this guy, maybe this place, the fees are higher, but the rate's lower. Maybe here the fees are low, lower and the rate's higher. It's somewhere. They have to make a certain <coughs> amount of money. There's a certain amount of due diligence that has to be done. You know, sometimes they do have programs that will come out and say, I don't know, the, the bank will cover the appraisal fees for this, for this month. There is that stuff that happens. Um, but in general, it's 50 basis points for an applicant uh, in commercial. So if you have a million dollar, it's 5,000 bucks, the application fees. The loan million? Yeah, if you have a million dollar, well, million dollar loan, not purchase price, if you have a million dollar loan, 50 basis points, okay. five grand. Um, but if it's a multi-unit, it's, it's usually about half that. But with multi-units, if you're doing a multi-unit, there's the application with the bank, then there's the application with CMHC, there's two of them. <coughs> right? Are they both not uh, In the bank one, it, us, we don't charge. It's, it's weird, we don't charge until it's approved. <laughs> Usually. It's kind of a weird way to do it. Um, but CMHC will. It's up front. And it is, it's refundable less the amount of work they put in, which is very subjective for them. But I've seen them, I've seen, uh, we had a deal where, like, CMHC couldn't give, not, couldn't even give us a valid no, reason why it was no. And the person went conventional anyway, in the end, but they gave all of it back. They just, they couldn't even give a valid, a good enough no, not send the deal to Farm. It's just we do so much analysis, we'll talk it over, we'll, we'll get the people, the person who's approving at the other end, they've already bought in, they're getting the deal, they're like, nah, I just rubber stamp. It's, they go through the formality. But, the deal makes sense. There's times people walk in, trust me, you walk in and it can be a five minute meeting and you're just like, you're, it's not going to happen. Here, what? You don't like it sometimes, but, you know, you can't, you, you can't buy the 24 unit. 
apartment building a hundred thousand dollar thing. It's not gonna happen. Fully amortization periods, what you're seeing now for commercial and another one was about um, you know what you've seen for creative financing for putting deals together when there might not be full buildings or least pending. Sometimes you buy on projection, right? <coughs> not for the fact that you expect it to be empty, but leases are in the midst of being signed and I mean terms just trying to get ownership of Building on a residential building, if it's a residential building, normally we look at it and say, okay, like a new building's been built. It's not full. Uh, they, they'll go in and they'll just say, okay, we're renting for $750 a month per unit. They take that, multiply it by the amount of units. They're going to deduct what CMHC says the uh, vacancy rate is, which is 3.8 right now. Okay, they're going to deduct 3.8%. And they're just going to pretend it's fully rented. <coughs> okay? To get your value and stuff. Right. right. Especially at startup. If a building's been there for 10 years and it's half empty, eh, <laughs> it's going to be harder to sell. Because why is it empty? <coughs> right? Yeah. Okay. That's residential. Now, commercial, it's. It is a little more complex. Traditionally, banks like to see 75% at least. But it's all dep dependent on the owner. We've got clients that they got five or six buildings and they're 100% lease and they want to buy this building, it's empty. We'll probably do it. Because you know, in the whole scheme of things, really, it's not going to make a difference. But if you look at that one building all by itself, you probably wouldn't touch it. But if you look at this, the whole picture, that serves as as much they don't do this the cash flow analysis. The appraiser says it's worth two hundred thousand. Okay, it's worth two hundred thousand. Yeah. <coughs> right? But the apartment buildings, it's all about cash. Commercial building, new versus existing. You've got an older, older building. Yep. With that, that we'll say is ninety percent. Least with and and somebody wants to build a new strip commercial strip mall, with, we'll say, yeah, like the ones that are going up along Mountain Road. Okay, are they how, how would they be looked at differently? Not really, no, no, looking at the economic, you look at the economic life of most things. I mean, there's buildings up here that are downtown Moncton 100 years old and they're good for another 100 years, probably. Don't look too much at that. It's more of the, the, the current state of the building. No, but I'm saying the new ones, are they looked at differently because you, I don't know if you require like them to be pre-leased or? Seventy, in commercial, the, ideally you want 75% okay. current lease. Or, or you see the intent, maybe it's not leased today, but you know, there's someone coming in 30 days from now, you know, something reasonable. It's tough to finance it on spec. Yeah, that's right. Okay, unless you're a big operator and you have multiple located <coughs> buildings and you know, in in the vacancy rate is zero at all the other ones, but it's you have a completely vacant building in the whole scheme of things, it doesn't like I mean it doesn't bring your your numbers down much. But on a one off it's tough to finance. One so thing you so is, it, is it the big guys that are putting these strip malls along Mountain Road? Um, For the most part? Some of it's... A lot of it's these... Uh, like, it's not really income trust, but like the REITs. They're real estate REITs. Okay. A lot of them based on Ontario and Calgary. So it's not much... It could be like the Ontario teacher's pension. Funding. Behind the scenes, that's that's how a lot of these things get put up. 